We are live this morning. This is a very this, uh, morning edition of Elevate Your Grind. Typically, we'll do these in the afternoon, but we, uh, we want to wake up with you today. We want to have a cup of coffee with you. Everybody join us and uh, see who's around in the morning. So my guest today, uh, very, very important topic right now, jobs. We're going through a pandemic. People, unfortunately, are being furloughed. They're being let go. Companies are shutting down. And our guest today has a solution for all of that because his job is to get you a job. And I'm completely oversimplifying that. But I would love to welcome my guest today, Brian Passman, founder of Hunter Esquire. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. And uh, thanks for doing this in the morning. I'm a morning guy, so I'm feeling right at home, comfy with this. I hope other people are up and at it and getting back to some... Uh, Semblance of morning routines, showering up, brushing their hair, getting to their workstations, whatever that work may be, finding a job or in a job. Absolutely, man. Um, you know, it's funny. We call this a morning show and you're a morning person. You've probably been up for quite some time. It's 10 a.m. But for those of you in California, we're up with you right in the morning. Um, you know, I used to be a morning person until I had a, a six-month-old daughter who likes to wake me up in the middle of the night. So I'm dragging a little bit. But let's uh, let's not get into my personal life here. You Hunter Esquire, so you you guys focus a lot on staffing in the cannabis industry, correct? Um, you know, cannabis, especially down here, is not the biggest industry compared to so many others. What made you focus on the cannabis industry, and is that your main focus? Is that your niche, or are you guys kind of staffing across the board right now? Yeah, uh, uh, well, we, so you and I talked a little bit about uh, the fact that we have two firms. We have Hunter and Esquire and The Gig. Uh, the Gig is a staffing firm. Hunter and Esquire is a um, retained executive search firm. Uh, they're both focused on cannabis. Um, my background is in retained executive search for uh, really my whole career, starting a couple of decades ago in the medical device and biotech space for 15 years. And food and beverage CPG for two and a half ish years. And uh, in 2017, we launched uh, our search firms exclusive to serving the cannabis space because uh, we had become aware of sort of this unmet need that as of at that time was not being served uh, to cannabis companies looking to scale with the right talent in a professional way and hire conscientiously um so you know that's changed a bit there are there are more resources now but at that time that was our inspiration along with our love for the plant very cool yeah you know there, there's something to be said and in, in nothing against the industry now but a lot of people told me before i got into this that you can make a lot of money being the adult in the room and it's not that people in cannabis don't know what they're doing, but I believe our industry created a lot of first time entrepreneurs that really wanted to follow their passion that just didn't have formal business training. Um, they, they didn't have the experience, like, like you said, hiring executives and hiring professionals, they just did their job and they got it done and they knew the, the business, but they didn't know the ancillary stuff of it. Um, you're right in the thick of things what is this pandemic doing to the job market right now? Have you guys seen an increase in availability considering cannabis has been deemed an essential service or are people kind of holding off because they're not getting the, the revenues and the income that they saw? And I, I think kind of, I'd love to distinguish this, right? So you have the two firms that focus on um, two sides of the business. What is the executive search? look like right now versus the gig, you know, the people, the, the bud tenders, the cultivation specialists, the, the logistics specialists, the, the managers, right? What do those two markets look like now going through COVID-19? Yeah. Yeah. Our gig team right now certainly is a lot uh, busier. Um, you know, we work with, with all companies in the cannabis economy, MSOs included. And, you know, if you, if you were to, uh, add up the the open you know hourly or more of your your entry level roles with just the msos i mean that adds up to the thousands and any given mso is looking to hire one to three hundred roles right now of more of a tactical nature you know those those frontline folks um in the dispensaries those folks in the production sites and the labs uh that's that is really the industry's hiring focus right now there are more senior roles available um, 
but the uh, executive hiring has certainly uh, uh, slowed down a, a lot. So what, what I and our uh, Hunter Esquire team deal with right now is engaging a lot of conversations with companies that are uh, letting go of leaders. They uh, were speaking to those leaders, so there, there's a surplus. If, if, you, if you are watching this as a cannabis business owner, I would say right now is a tremendously opportunistic time to go out and get some A plus talent. Uh, there's a lot of really good folks sitting on the sidelines right now. Uh, so, you know, the conversations are around that. We have a lot of conversations about, well, how to exit people the right way and what to do for them afterwards, because, um, you know, there was a lot of um, hiring and there's been a lot of firing. And I think for just the cannabis economy to maintain a good, uh, attractive brand to the candidate marketplace. You know, it's important for companies to remember that you know these are people with families to support, and uh, there's a lot of things that can be done. I know we're going to we're talking about jobs, but right now the state of affairs is uh, there's a lot of layoffs, and I just just as an industry service announcement, please treat your people you're exiting as people. Provide them with resume writing services, outplacement services or just take care of them in any way you can on a severance package, send them home with, with a bonus, even if it's just an Amazon gift card, something. Yeah, no, it's definitely a time where, where people should be treated like humans. We're all kind of going through this together. And I'm sure a lot of companies don't want to furlough their employees or, or get rid of them. But unfortunately, we have to right now. I'm glad that there are people like you, especially in our industry, that are, are taking those people and helping them find whatever the next opportunity is. Um, you know, right now you are focused on the cannabis industry, but as we've learned on this podcast, a lot of people who are in the cannabis industry didn't come from the cannabis industry unless they started out on the West Coast and they're moving their way east, right? We didn't really have an industry or an economy on this coast three years ago or four years ago, right? So when you guys are starting to engage with leaders, when you're starting to, and, and the, you know, I, I like hearing this at both levels, at the, at the gig level and the Hunter Esquire level. What are you looking for when you, you're finding somebody f from outside the industry that wants to come in? What kind of qualities are you looking for? What kind of experience? You know, what would you say really translates from a, can't say traditional, but from other industries into our industry really well that you've seen be successful for y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, one big thing is, is uh, you know, we look for people that have an inherent interest in working in the industry, uh, regardless of the level of the role from $14 an hour up to a, a CEO. We do look for someone that has their own uh, uh, internal inspiration to enter the space. We help them make a well-informed decision uh, and bring them through the process. What we don't do is we talk people into entering the space. So that's probably first and foremost. To your point, there's a lot of passionate founders in the space. And I think that's, that's great. Um, we do shy away from people that are, I think, uh, at what you can call a, a little bit of, a, of an overboard level of, of passion yep. for it. They've mm -hmm. been a little bit troublesome for some of our clients when it's overzealous. And, you know, there's, there's, th th there is a sort of healthy level of passion to enter the space. Along with that is, you know, we look for experience um, across industries. Um, so that's, that's a good... Um, I guess a uh, quantitative way to measure uh, someone's adaptability. Have they, you know, succeeded in a medical space and a food space or whatever the case may be. Um, so we also talk about, well, what are, what have been your opportunities to start something up? So we look for proof that they're a go-getter, a self-starter. Uh, we talk about difficult challenges they faced in their career. So, you know, we're measuring what their kind of, you know, grinder level is can they really persevere through tough times we talk about examples of having done that in their professional lives and their personal lives to get a under you know holistic understanding of their personal yeah. and professional vibe uh so those are probably the key um soft skills it's it and and then um and then just you know uh, again i think the why is a big deal you know we've we've achieved some pretty high levels of uh stick Pre-COVID, I think our stick rate with placements was 94%. That means, wow. you know, our placements in the industry since 2017, 94% of those people are still with those companies. 
um, through vetting for uh, those skills and matching culture because cannabis companies are very different. This is a startup economy, and I would argue that all companies in the space are startups, and some of them are still defining their cultures, uh, and, and many have. But, you know, honestly communicating that culture and understanding from the talent what culture they fit well within, I think is a really, really important um, uh, point that some people miss, and especially now with a lot of people unemployed, you know, companies are going to very rapidly hire, they're going to cycle through candidates. Uh, talent is going to apply for a lot of jobs and, you know, probably rightfully so just be grateful to get an interview and an offer potentially. But I would, I would um, hope to inspire people to still be mindful of, you know, measuring, is this a good fit for me? Because yeah. a J-O-B can be just a J-O-B is a very uh, painful way to collect a paycheck and pay the bills. Uh, ideally you look for a good fit overall. So we want people to be weary to just trying to not take a job to get their foot in the door. Um, if it's not something that they really want to do every day, right? Because no matter what you, you're going to have to do that for a certain period of time. Um, and there's no guarantee that, that, you know, you're going to move up in a different way. Um, you know, a lot of people want to get into this industry and there's probably a lot of people watching that are either in the industry. Um, right now, a lot of people, you know, most people will tell you the best way to find a job in the cannabis industry is to go to the company directly or to go to Indeed, right? And a lot of times, you know, the, the desirable jobs in the cannabis industry are, are kind of like a new pair of Jordans, right? They get listed and then they're sold out before you have a chance to click on the buy now button. Um, what suggestion, you know, if somebody truly, truly wants to get into this industry and maybe they're a little agnostic on where they'll live or, or what they want to do, you know, how would you suggest that they work with a firm like yourself or how would you suggest that they go about that process? And, you know, realistically, is there a way that they can make themselves stand out? Yeah. And just, I'll back up just, just, just a little bit because you, you know, you spoke to a point a moment ago, you know, um, I do endorse people taking uh, uh, roles in the space if they want to get in, just get their foot in the door, to take roles uh, that maybe aren't their ultimate opportunity. I think importantly is to find a company, uh, a brand that resonates with you, maybe because it's more medicinally uh, focused or maybe because um, you use the product and you believe in it. I know plenty of people that have uh, progressed well in the space by just taking um, a job in the space that maybe wasn't the job they wanted, but with the organization they wanted to be in because of the very rapid growth of the space still, you can progress quite rapidly. I mean, it's, it's okay. not unheard of to get promoted on a quarterly basis. In some of these no, we, we, we had D Williams in here from truly who started out, you know, in one of the stores and, and is now is running, uh, you know, uh, physician relations through the entire state. So uh, we've seen it firsthand right here on the show. Great. Yeah. Um, look, yeah. Uh, you know, to those who are thinking about how to get in, uh, yeah, connecting with recruiters that specialize in the space uh, would be a recommendation for sure. Uh, Pre distancing, I would um, typically recommend. Uh, going to shows. There's a lot of physical trade shows in the space. There were and there will be again. Uh, maybe even more easily now attend virtual shows, which many are complimentary or uh, much lower cost of entry than previously. So there's a lot of sources, Cannabis Lab and Benzinga Media. And uh, I mean, there's their uh, Marijuana Business Daily following the NCIA. There's There are a lot of sources to um, subscribe to free newsletters. I would recommend yeah. doing so. Um, because, you know, you really want to get in the space, you, you do have to put a concerted effort forth because, yes, when XYZ cannabis company posts a job, they are going to get dozens or hundreds of applicants overnight. And the people that are reviewing those are typically overloaded with work. So it's not a malicious thing when your resume fall, falls into the black hole. It's just, it is what it is. And so to wait and just watch the job boards and apply and try that spray and pray approach is probably going to leave you banging your head. Um, so, you know, LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. 
many cannabis companies have gone mainstream. You don't have to go to um, Indeed or any other maybe more obscure um, job sites. Uh, many of you know, these, these hiring authorities, they are active on Indeed. I'm sorry, LinkedIn, especially right now. So I would say um, friend them and send a short and sweet, you know, curated message with a resume attached expressing your interest because uh, if you can get ahead of the other 300 applicants that are going to apply for the role you want after it gets posted, you're, you know, you're behind the eight ball already. So proactively managing it, putting together a list of brands that speak to you, again, maybe product or corporate brands because you consume them or you believe in what they stand for. I think is a good idea and then just actively watch them and reach out to them uh, and in this time right now I could tell you I speak to a lot of hiring authorities in the functional leadership and HR seats and they're watching unemployment rise and their belief is you know we're going to um, kind of just have our pick of the litter um, as far as talent goes and they're right so you know um, there's a, 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 um, a lot to be said for um, understanding the position they're in where they're in this very sought after position and there's a lot of talent out there for them to choose from. So you do have to differentiate yourself. And I believe in speaking about your why, you know, why are you interested? Why in the space? And it should be more than, well, I think it'll be cool or fun to work with weed. It's, uh, there's, those are probably, the, the only couple of wrong answers, there's any number of right answers because, yeah. you know, you know, maybe you or a loved one benefited from the plant or it's business opportunity, whatever that is, understand your why and be able to really um, articulate that in a professional way to someone in the space. Don't assume if they're in the space, they're a stoner or whatever kind of negative perception or stigma you might want to go with. There's uh, predominantly professionals in the space that are very much interested in your why and measuring will you stick and be able to grind it out with us because it is a very difficult space to thrive in. It, it, it is. And it's a very competitive space and it's a very tight knit space. You know, everybody kind of knows each other through our various associations like C Lab. Um, I kind of want to back up to something that you said, you know, if somebody gets through the interview process, you said we are, we are, uh, an industry of professionals. It is just like any other industry, except for the fact that we're dealing with a schedule one drug. Um, if somebody gets the interview and, and the people that you are helping, what type of advice do you give them that would be different from any other interview process they go for any other job? I mean, most of us know, are, are we still showing up in suit and tie? Um, or is there something to be said that you don't want to overdress for the interview as well? You know, if you're not going for a, a back office corporate job, um, you know, so should people still wear a suit and tie? I'm assuming do research on the people that are, are interviewing you. Um, you know, what, what other little nuances and, do you think, are, is everything kind of the same across the board in our industry, essentially, is what I'm no. trying to say? No, no. In fact, very little is, is the same across the industry. I would say, um, do your research on the company. Uh, you know, plenty of CEOs out there are, are doing podcasts like this. Uh, they're being interviewed and they're speaking about their, their brands and, and their company cultures, I would say, to the best of your, your ability. Uh, research the company, get a feel. If you're working with a recruiter, ask their advice, of course. Um, you know, there's, there's a very broad spectrum from um, you can show up in jeans and t-shirt to suit and tie. And of course, it depends a little bit on the role that you're interviewing for, mm -hmm. but it will depend on the company. Uh, the best advice I can give is don't show up in a, um, in a weed leaf tie or t-shirt or hat or something like that, or God forbid, um, under the influence, the, some of these companies, many of these companies operate in a place where they don't drug test, which does not mean that they endorse uh, consumption during the interview process or on the job. So I think that should be the biggest takeaway. And you know, everyone's interviewing now from home, really. We're not, we don't have a lot of in-person interviewing. So uh, you know, interviewing tips to take it just one step further, is you know make sure your lighting is right make sure your connectivity is good um have your station set up have your notes uh set up maybe be prepared for that person to ask to see your workstation 
so have it cleaned up. This is advice that we give to a lot of our hiring authorities in this world right now where they're making hiring decisions without meeting people in person. And in order to get that more informal feel that you get from in, in person interviews where you might break bread, maybe have lunch or coffee or something together, uh, we're inspiring hiring authorities in order to continue to move forward and bring on talent without the in-person meeting is share a little bit. Maybe have an evening or a weekend video chat rather than only during business hours. Maybe have a family member as part of it because you know sometimes a spouse is brought into the selection process. That's typically at a more senior uh, level, but uh, the idea is be prepared for and ask for a more informal experience to get to know you better without the luxury of getting together in person. So have your space uh, tightened up and um, don't just put on a nice shirt. Consider also putting on pants. Yeah, I'm going to fully admit to everybody here when we had Commissioner Freed on, um, you know, I was last minute that I was going to be on screen. 100% I was wearing a suit jacket up top and gym pants below the desk. So, um, <laughs> very, very much the norm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I felt very awkward coming downstairs and, you know, formal up top and, and, and lounge on the bottom. Hey, Brian, how, how's my setup? Am I good here? Is my lighting good? Can we, can we show up to an interview in a little TV studio? I think it looks great. You're doing great. Todd. <laughs> um, so I want to, I want to go back again. We, we were focusing right now on a lot of the helping people get job side, but you work on both sides of the equation, right? You, you help find uh, people to fill roles, but realistically, you know, a big part of what you guys do is working with companies to find the right people to fill those roles, right? It's not just, okay, let's go find a bunch of recruits and then see what open job offerings there are. You're, you're sitting with the companies and trying to figure out what they look for, figure out their culture, and then, um, you know, see who's a good fit. Are you being leveraged more, would you say, by the larger organizations or by the mid-market and small ones? Because as you mentioned, when a company posts a job and that, that hiring manager, that recruiting manager in this industry, they're probably not doing that full time. And they've probably got a heap of other work that they have to do. So they're maybe not doing it as quickly as efficiently. And there's a good chance that at some point, you know, we're all humans. They get to a point where they say, you know what, this person's good enough for now. So, um, you know, what, what type of companies are, are working with you right now? And tell us some of the advantages of hiring a firm like Hunter Esquire. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. We do, um, we do a lot of work, uh, small, medium, and, and larger companies in the space. Uh, you know, some of our larger clients use us more selectively for um, those really tough to fill senior executive roles where it's, your unicorn profile and they set those goal posts up really narrow and they've all tapped out their personal um, networks and um, it's time to go outside and tap a, a broader network and just have someone else own it. Uh, but you know, many of these larger companies, they've built uh, big internal teams, uh, talent acquisition teams that is with, with a lot of very experienced corporate recruiters in house and very capable HR folks. Um, our, our, you know, smaller companies, they, they are largely uh, looking to save. And so it's a lot of that hiring from the network rather than going to outside uh, sources. However, there are plenty of small and medium sized companies out there that are very well capitalized, that are run by uh, people that have used third party experts before and uh, are very just ready and willing. We had a call with uh, um, vertically integrated group out of California yesterday. They're a teeny tiny company with a bright future, really well capitalized. And they hired us on a couple of VP searches because they've used recruiters before in more mainstream industries. So uh, a lot of it depends on the background of the people making those decisions. And, um, and of course, what their finances are. And, uh, you know, the, the, the benefits using a firm like us is the, the broader network. We, um, have very deep networks in consumer packaged goods and life sciences, which are very great industries to tap into for the space. Our gig team has a lot of retail and hospitality uh, recruitment experience, which bodes well for staffing uh, dispensaries and so on for, for those clients. Um, also, decide on a search firm that you like, that you really like and can stick with, whether it's us or someone else, because 
um, they should know your culture. They should be able to vet regardless of the high or well beyond paper. They should understand your style, your team style, the culture. And when you meet with people, um, you should feel like you're meeting with people that fit well on paper, which many of us can easily uh, discern, but um, hire a search firm that actually understands what fits within your four walls, be, you know, more than just what fits in terms of matching resume to job description. Uh, I would I would say really rather than shop around always looking for the best next um, deal from a search firm try to decide on one that fits economically but also fits your style and stick with them and then lean on them and hold them accountable and ask them to operate in a very transparent way we we deliver tracking tools to our clients so that they can see the status of our search from start to finish we don't operate in a vacuum it's this is not there's no magical secret sauce that we sprinkle on this to get this done. It's just hard work and connectivity and leveraging your network and really wanting to own it and love talking to people all day long and never being satisfied with just delivering average talent. We here, personally, I speak for our team, we do not appreciate average, mediocre um, activities or outcomes. Uh, that's sort of how we vet our clients a little bit is do they really want to build, um, you know, an A plus team to the best that they can. And if they want to really search for top talent, then we're a good fit because we're not just going to throw resumes. It is a process, not a long process. The active recruitment wraps up in about two to three weeks tops. And then the interview process, you know, takes whatever amount of time it takes from there, depending on, you know, the pace of business for the hiring company. Sure. And, and I couldn't agree with that more. I mean, if you're going to take something like hiring and, and outsource it to someone, I'd imagine you'd want the cultures to kind of line up pretty similarly. They don't have to be exact, but they, I would say they'd have to be complementary because why would you want someone who doesn't match your values going out there and staffing your company? Um, it, it just doesn't make sense because you're not going to bring you the type of people that fit your culture. Maybe they're probably going to try to bring the type of people that fit their culture. People tend to do business and, and socialize with the people that are similar to them. Um, so yeah. I can absolutely see where you're coming from. And it, it's great that you guys are such a fit in this industry. Um, I mean, I see you guys around C lab, uh, very involved, you know, always talking to people. Um, how does this process work? Does it start with you guys are just always out there looking for good people to kind of put on your bench or to kind of put into a resume to say, Hey, I might have something good that might pops up with you. Or does it start with a company approaching you and saying, Hey, we need X, Y, and Z roles. Can you go out and find us somebody? And then you go find a pool of talent specific for that company. Or is it both? Do you have a pool of talent that you're always kind of sitting on that like, hey, these guys are really good. We don't have an opportunity for them right now, but when one pops up, we should definitely, you know, make the introduction. Yeah, it's both. I mean, I, as much as I would love to claim that our, our phone only rings from companies looking to hire us, uh, it rings plenty from talent who is looking to move within a space or move into the space. So um, really for us as a retained search firm, it begins with the company. If we're talking about the process of actually uh, fulfilling a role the majority of the time its company calls us with the need we agree on uh, the fee and our approach um, sign on the line uh, the retainer money's up for, received up front and then we go get after it uh, and again then that's that two or three week recruitment process um, certainly we uh, bring talent to the market uh, that's picked up a lot more now with the uh, depth of talent on the market. But um, yeah, the conversations we have all day, every day with talent is, is just consistently building up our database. We, we work with a, you know, applicant tracking software. It's a very robust database. Uh, we, we build on it every chance we get with talent. You know, we get plenty of outreach all day, every day through LinkedIn so it's, it's, a, it's, you know, constantly building up the resume database and having as many live conversations as we can with that talent that if it's outside of a search, that just looks great and we have to speak to them because uh, we can't speak to everyone that doesn't fit for a job we have on our desk. But we do respond to everyone. That is, for us, very important is to, again, treat people as we would like to be treated. And maybe we can't get on the phone with everyone, but we do respond. We do put them in our database. 
we tag them, we have our search codes, and we do keep everyone in mind for opportunities as they come up. So absolutely. So should we make the suggestion to people that are watching this and want to get in the industry or are looking at uh, looking for a new job uh, to reach out to you guys and, and, and see what you have and see if they're fit for, for anything that you can find them in the future. Yeah, please. There's, there are contact tabs on our website, which is hunter esquire.com. There is uh, contact us through hunter esquire. There is a gig tab. If you think you're more of a fit to get staffed, in an hourly or more entry level role, please uh, message us appropriately through one of those two um, or reach out directly to me through LinkedIn. Find him on LinkedIn at Brian Passman. Uh, I'm not letting you go just yet. I know that you've got to get to your next meeting. You've got a few minutes with your team. So I'm going to take a few more minutes here. You know, people that are approaching this industry right now, where are, where, where are companies hiring the most and, and kind of distinguish? Are you working with both plant touching and non-plant touching? I believe you said yes. Who's hiring more? And then within the plant touching, is it the bud tenders? Is it the delivery specialists? Are it the cultivators? Where, you know, people who have interest in these type of jobs, who, where, where are these companies hiring the most right now, given what's going on? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> plant touching businesses are focused right now on sales and operations uh, in, in, in our world, at least. So in our experience, Traveling through the space in the recent months, it's a focus on sales and business development talent and operational talent for those plant touching companies, be it retail operations or back of the house uh, operations. That is the ask. And again, it's more at your um, uh, tactical level. Uh, there, there are plenty of ancillary um, service providing companies that we work with. Uh, be it um, CRM providers or fintech or just any other kind of, as we call them, can of tech uh, companies in the space. Those, uh, those companies are, are um, again, in our world, uh, doing just fine. They are hiring in all regards. Uh, finance and marketing are very challenging uh, roles for these companies. So that, that has slowed um, a little bit. Historically, those were uh, very uh, popular asks that slowed a little bit, especially in the, on the marketing front uh, for plant touching companies, but again, not so much for service providers. So if you're looking, you know, if you come from a background in, you know, you know, tech, IT, or uh, some other, or, or financial services, and you're looking at service providing companies in this space, I'd say that the news is mostly positive. Those companies are uh, doing well. Um, some of our clients in that space are doing ex exceedingly well uh, right now because uh, you know we are an essential business. Companies are still open. Uh, of course, you know Massachusetts is a little bit different. There are some challenges out there for sure, but for the most part, a lot of product is being sold and a lot of um, ancillary service support is needed. And top to bottom, those companies are hiring across all disciplines right now. Sure. That, that's awesome. And I'm, I think it's great information for the folks watching this show um, that want to get involved in our industry. And, and here at C-Lab, we want as many people that want to be here to be here as possible. And then after you get a job in the industry, come join us at C-Lab when, when things get going uh, again. Um, the last thing I just want to, I want to leave with Brian here is we want to get people to feel good. You know, a, a lot of negative stuff to focus on right now. Many success stories that, that you're really proud of that you can share with us before we let you go. Oh gosh, this, um, shockingly, we had a big client hire a um, plant manager recently who never met uh, anyone in person from the team nor toward the facility that they were hired to lead. This is a production extraction facility for a big company in the space. Um, I think that's a big, big win for both sides, for company thinking creatively and saying we have a need. We're going to go out and um, wrap this up and bring in some top talent. And I give compliments to uh, the candidates, all finalists, including those that didn't get the job. And of course, ultimately to the guy who did for accepting that sight unseen for, um, and, and, and I should note, this was not someone who's unemployed. This is someone that exited uh, a role with an established company in a mainstream industry to pursue this opportunity because he wanted it. So 
you know, big win, I think that is very um, unique. I mean, I've placed plenty of plant managers across industries. I've, I, if you asked me a few months ago, if someone would have taken a job like that without touring the facility, I would have said absolutely not. Uh, so I think that's big, a big win for everyone at home. Uh, creative virtual interviewing, just getting to know each other. You can share a lot as, as far as graphs and case studies and get to know each other personally without actually shaking hands or hugging it out or touring the facility together. So keep the dream alive. Have faith. That, that's, it's going to be okay. Amazing. There are jobs out there. Yeah. That, that's an amazing story with, with two sides of that equation, both taking a leap of faith um, and, and it working out, right? You know, taking a job without ever, how, haven't ever seen the place that you're going to manage versus someone hiring somebody who had never met and didn't even show them the place that they're going to manage. So that's an amazing story. I'm glad to hear those things are, are happening. For those of you that are looking for to get into this industry, Brian, can you tell us one more time how we get in touch with you? www.huntersquire.com. You can message us through a contact us link there or find me on LinkedIn, Brian Passman, B-R-Y-A-N-P-A-S-S-M-A-N. Awesome. Brian, I know that you have to run. You have another call coming up and you've got, you've got a whole team of people that you need to prep for that call. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you very much for joining me on our first morning edition of Elevate Your Grind. My pleasure, Todd. This was fun, man. Thank you. Stay well. Absolutely. And, and like always, I look forward to seeing everybody back when we can get together in person again. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're really going to start enjoying things. And, uh, you know, I, I, a lot of times I bitch and moan having to drive down to Miami or drive down to Fort Lauderdale for a C-Lab event, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen anymore, at least not till the second event after the lockdown's over. So everybody, right. thank you again for watching Elevate Your Grind. Uh, I had a great time this morning, really enjoyed it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Anybody out there looking for jobs, this was a great, not even jobs. If you're looking for a career, this was a great podcast for you to watch. Tons of good information. And we have a recruiter who is doing a great job staffing the cannabis industry, both at the executive level and at all other levels right here. If you are looking for a job, please go out, find them, hunteresquire.com. And then after you get that job, come join us at C-Lab and learn a little bit more about your industry. Come network with your peers and let's progress together. www.joincelab.com. It's Friday. Everybody take it easy. Everybody enjoy their weekend. And we are signing off.